cannot touch my work out here at all. Fuck is wrong with you niggas? You niggas can't touch what I've done out in the nation of Israel since 1993, nigga. Fuck are you niggas talking about? You niggas teaching a fucking lie. Sex is not marriage. And I taught the shit. I was taught the shit and taught the shit. Debated the shit. What the fuck are you niggas talking about? Sex alone is not marriage. You niggas are stupid. And you learned it from me. You learned it from me. You learned it from Zabak. You learned it from fucking LOZ. Light of Zion. You learned it from fucking 14th Street Israelite. You learned it from GMS. You learned it from IUIC. IUIC switched the shit. I give, I give them that credit. You little motherfuckers, you learned it from me, dawg. Fuck you niggas watching me out here. Fuck you niggas talking about. You little ass pups talking shit. You niggas learned from me, nigga. You was watching us, nigga. Before you was House of Israel, homes. I was House of Israel. Just to set, to set the record straight about you wannabes. Johnny come lately ass niggas. Right? Trying to represent offspring of what we built. All right, that's enough. First and foremost, I want to start by giving all the praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh Bashim, Yahushai Bashim, Rabbi Kodash. Double honor to the elder apostles of the great millstone who rule well. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful elect tabernacle of David, scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Now, I don't know what it is with this David Ruffin spirit, where, uh, you know, certain guys. You know, which, you know, the previous guy that the uh, elder apostles and different brothers been getting on, this uh, this guy, Bishop Nathaniel, or the head of the IUIC, and how, you know, they've been uh, going on their latest, you know, boast tirade about how, you know, they were the so-called originators or the ones that brought out this doctrine, that doctrine. You know, you learned it from us, and now you're hearing this guy. Well, I'm going to quote what Yahweh Shai said to Nicodemus. Because, yeah, these are men who did come in before us. You know, they have, uh, you know, you know, double-digit numbers, you know, in the faith. And um, they never stop. So, you know, that's where they're given the respect. But it stops when it comes to certain doctrines that are still being taught that needs to be corrected and adjusted. You know, we know Nate is still going off on the MOTB. He's going off on um, the new moon being a full moon. You know, he's uh, going off on the image of the beast and different other things. This guy right here, now he's teaching that sex is not marriage. Now, you be in this thing as long as you have. And this is why I'm going to quote Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai told Nicodemus, You are a master of Israel and know not these things? Where did this heresy come from? So be aware, you know, to you uh, brothers, you know, you new brothers coming in and uh, also you sisters. Be aware of this, this heresy. Now all of a sudden, sex is not marriage. What What is... Well, what is the, 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 the final or the complete step to marriage? I dare y'all to go on Google and do a simple research and type in the word consummation. What does the word consum consummation mean? The marriage would not be complete. It would not be accomplished if you don't finalize it. What's the final step in marriage? What do you have to do to 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 finalize it? To 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 you know pretty much fulfill the marriage agreement. And what was the result of that? What did you have to uh, give to the father? Wasn't there a dowry? Wasn't there a a, a cloth? 
and that's a that was that's the marriage uh, receipt to prove that the daughter has been married off. So what are, what are you talking about? You know, and this guy he's filled with with uh, rage and is very confident. But you're you're totally wrong. So let's uh, let's deal with that. I'm gonna use a few examples. And then Lord willing, you brothers and you sisters are edified. All right, sex is pretty much the 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 final the, the final or complete step to marriage. That's how I'm gonna put it. All right, this is uh, Matthew 22 and 23, and this is uh, the Sadducees trying to entangle Yahweh in his words to try to trip him up. All right, and they was you know they was very um crafty with how they questioned or or you know gave Yahweh his question because. You know, they took from the law of inheritance dealing with a, a deceased brother. If a brother doesn't leave an offspring, you know, from his wife, the, uh, his brother has to come behind him and, le and, and leave that seed for his brother. And if he decides not to, basically he got, you know, spit upon, he got disrespected. All right, his name was uh, tarnished. He lost respect. But they also integrated the story of Sarah, which you read about in uh, the book of Tobit, and I'm going to get into that. And this is what insp inspired their question. When you had seven men who tried to marry uh, this woman, Sarah, but it was uh, preordained that she was to be, be married to Tobias. So all seven of those men that tried to marry her, when they tried to lie with her, to, to finalize the marriage, a, a demon came and, and put them to death. So this is where this comes from. So I'm going to read this and then we're going to go into it. This is like Matthew 22 and 23. It says, the same day came to him the Sadducees, which say there is no resurrection and asked him, saying, Master, Moses said, if a man die, having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. Right. Now there was with us seven brethren, and the first, when he had married a wife, deceased, and having no issue, left his wife unto his brother. All right. So they're saying that basically seven dudes tried to go through this uh, process, and it didn't pan out. It was it was not a success because they all got put to death it says likewise the second also and the third unto the seventh and last of all the woman died also so they said okay not only did all those seven men die but also the woman died too so this is where they think they're going to trap the lord up and the lord saw right through it therefore in the resurrection whose wife shall she be of the seven for they all had her and the Sadducees, by the way, they didn't believe in the resurrection. They don't believe in angels or the resurrection, but the Pharisees did, right? Yahweh Shai answered and said unto them, You do err not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of the Most High. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. So in other words, they're, they're not in given in marriage because... You know, when, once you uh, transform unto the heavens, you're in a different glory. You're not in the glory of the of the terrestrial, the flesh. You're in the glory of the celestial. Angels do not have sex. All right. Angels, they don't get erections. They don't, you know, they don't get orgasm. That that's not in in their uh, glory. Their flesh is different. But even though they're in the likeness of, of they look like actual people. But they're celestial. All right. So let's go to the story that inspired this question. And this is in the book of uh, Tobit, the sixth chapter. And I believe this is uh, Tobias, which was the son of uh, Tobit. He was conversing with uh, the archangel. So this is uh, Tobit 6. And I'm going to try to read through it. 
this is a pretty long chapter, but you, you're going to understand, you know, once I read through it. Um, there's a start at the top. It says, Tobit 6 and 1, it says, And as they went on their journey, they came in in the evening to the river Tigris, the Tigris River, and they lodged there. And when the young man went down to wash himself, a fish leaped out of the river, and he would have devoured him. Then the angel said unto him, Take the fish. And the young man laid hold of the fish and drew it to land. To whom the angel said, Open the fish and take the heart and the liver and the gall and put them up safely. So you're going to cut this fish open. All right, take the organs out, the liver, the heart, the gall, and you're going to put it up. So they, you know, basically filleted the fish. And roasted it and, and, and ate the, you know, the meat. It says, so the young man did as the Andrew commanded him. And when they had roasted the fish, they did eat it. Showing you that, you know, the angels, you know, they can eat too. All right. Hey, in the kingdom, we're going we gonna to eat, even though we're going to be in our extraterrestrial state. We're going to be able to enjoy uh, both glories. We're going to be able to still lay down with our women and marry while still uh, enjoying the, the, the glory of uh the celestial nature as well it's, man the kingdom is going to be off the chain man but uh, this is just another example to show that you know they can uh the angels can eat too just like we eat all right uh the three angels that visited um a uh, lot you know they ate uh, uh abraham when he made up that that calf and took that milk you know and and and, and they ate you know and uh even yahweh when he came back in his glory you know, he ate that uh that fish with his disciples. So anyway, it says, then they both went on their way till they drew near to Egbertain. Then the young man said to the angel, Brother Azarius, to what use is the heart and the liver and the gall of the fish? And he said unto him, touching the heart and the liver, if a devil or an evil spirit trouble any, we must make a smoke thereof before the man or the woman and the party show be no more vexed and a lot of these christians you know given their exegesis their opinion you know this is the reason why one of the reasons why they don't believe that these uh books in the apocrypha are inspired or, or canon because they think that this is uh an angel teaching tobias to to basically perform witchcraft or magic which that's uh that's blasphemy it's no different than uh, David playing a harp to 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 beat out the demons that was on Saul. All right, the angels they know how to deal with with spirits. All right, because there's a hierarchy of angels. So of course one of the archangels would know how to deal with the spirits. All right. So it says, as for the gall. It is good to anoint a man that have whiteness in his eyes, and he shall be healed. All right, like hey, another another one, Yahweh Shai, he healed the blindness of a man by taking some clay and, and and spitting on his eye, and 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 putting it across his eye and healing him, healing him back of his eyesight. Was that magic? Was that witchcraft? So the a lot of these Christians are lame, man. They don't they they the most is not dealing with them. Verse nine it says. And when they were co come near to Ragis, the angel said to the young man, Brother, today we shall lodge with Raguel, who is thy cousin. He also have only he had, he also have one only daughter named Sarah. I will speak for her that she may be given thee for a wife. For to thee doeth the right of her appertain, seeing thou art thou only art of her kindred. And the maid is fair and wise, and therefore hear me, and I will speak to her father. And when we return from Regis, we will celebrate the marriage. For I know that Raguel cannot marry her to another according to the law of Moses, but he shall be guilty of death, because the right of the inheritance doeth rather appertain to thee than to any other. And that's why the other men that tried to get with her before he got in the picture all got put to death it says then the young man answered the angel i have heard brother azarias 
that this maid have been given to seven men who all died in the marriage chamber. What is a marriage chamber? It's, it's basically a bed where you finalize or complete the marriage. Without that, you're, you're not completely married. Now, you can be betrothed to a woman, which is like on the level of being married. I Meaning, you know, she's promised to you, but it's not really complete. It's not really a, a, a joined union. You're, you, you have not joined uh, uh, one be, to become one flesh. What does it mean to join to become one flesh and no longer be twain? But you got to join flesh to flesh to become one in the marriage chamber. Right? And now I am the only son of my father and I am afraid lest if I go in unto her I die as other before for a wicked spirit loveth her which heard of nobody but those which come unto her wherefore I also fear lest I die and bring my father's and my mother's life because of me to the grave with sorrow for they have no other son to bury them. Then the angel said unto him do us not Doest thou not remember the precepts which thy father gave thee, that thou shouldest marry a wife of thy own kindred? Wherefore hear me, O my brother, for she shall be given thee to wife, and make thou no reckoning of the evil spirit. For this same night shall she be given thee in marriage. See that? So basically, y'all gonna get together in that marriage chamber. You ain't got nothing to worry about. That demon is, is not gonna uh, hit you. It's not gonna take you out. So y'all gonna be given in marriage, meaning y'all gonna lay down with each other. That's that. That's the act of marriage. What are these guys talking about? And and by the way, the IUIC, they teach the same thing. Basically, in their eyes, with their uh, worldly uh, point of view, the marriage ain't finalized unless you sign that damn uh, marriage license, according to the state. You got to sign it on paper. So, you know, they're pushing that worldly uh, uh, process of marriage like Kevin Samuels. And that's where he was off trying to encourage, you know, marriage according to the state, you know, going down to the uh, the, the chapel and, you know, going down to the state and, and, and making that contract. When all you're doing is you're making the state the third party as an overseer of your marriage. And when you do that, shit. So many lessons uh, that the brothers over the years went into dealing with that subject. That basically it's a lose lose situation if you do that. In the eyes of the Most High, you laying down with that woman that you you that that's final. Are you you are you you two are now a union in the eyes of the Heavenly Father. So anyway, it says, and when thou shalt come into the marriage chamber, thou shalt take the ashes of perfume and shalt lay it up lay upon them some of the heart and liver of the fish and shall make a smoke with it and the devil shall smell it and flee away and never come again any more. But when thou shalt come to her, uh, rise up both of you and pray to the Most High, which is merciful, who will have pity on you and save you. Fear not, for she is appointed unto thee from the beginning and thou shalt preserve her and shall go and she shall go with thee. Moreover, I suppose that she shall bear thee children now, when Tobias heard these things, he loved her and his heart was effectually joined to her. Now, let's read this in the GNT. That, that um, reverse was that. Uh, I think it was 16. <laughs> let's go here real quick. It's going to make it even more plain. It's like, this is why I like going to this uh, translation. Now, that's not always accurate. Oh, there we go. It's uh, Tobit uh, 6 and um, 16, it says, when you go into the bedroom, take the fish's heart and liver with you and place them on the burning incense so that the odor will spread throughout the room. When a demon smells it, he will leave and never come near Sarah again. Before you consummate, and like I urged you just before, do a, a, a quick a quick Google search. You know, what does it mean to consummate? But before you consummate the marriage, both of you must get up and pray for the Lord in heaven to be merciful 
to you and to protect you. Don't be afraid. Sarah was meant to be yours from the beginning of creation. You will rescue her from the demon and she will go with you to your home. You and Sarah will have many children whom you will love very much. So don't worry. Okay. So there it is. So marriage is pretty much the 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 the, the ritual to a man and a woman being one. Which of course, you know, in retrospect, going back to you know our ancient customs, you know, the, the transaction started with you going to the father first. You know, it was very transactional. You know, you 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 talk to the father. You know, you want her, you want his daughter to uh, to wife, and if he saw fit, you know, y'all would uh, make that agreement with each other. Um, you would you would uh, give him the uh, the fifty shekels. He would give you that cloth. Y'all go to the the marriage chamber. You, you get it in. You know, leave the blood on the cloth, and that's your receipt. And y'all also would have a, a marriage um, ceremony. You know, I believe all this would take place uh, the same day. All right. Y'all would have a um, basically a, a wedding feast. Now, what happened with the Lord's uh, mother and father, Joseph and Mary? And y'all teach that uh, Joseph had sex with Mary. All one West. That's, this is what we teach. This is what we believe. But why did he have to put her away pr uh, privily? Why did he have to hide? Her pregnancy, because he 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 jumped past all that. He went straight for it, and and knocked it down. So she was already his wife. All right. So this is another heresy, man. And this is the reason why we can't come together with these other groups, these other guys. You know, even though we we, we see them, you know, teaching. And they are teaching that we're Israelites and to keep the commandments, so on and so forth. But they going off on, on things. That's why we can't come together. We got to all speak the same thing. There's not supposed to be any division among us. So if there's any division according to the doctrine, guess what? Guess what we do? We avoid them and we warn you about them. All right. And, and, and we rebuke them, rebuke them sharply. Nothing personal is always business because we're defenders of the gospel. All right, so let's get uh, another quick example. I'm gonna get straight to the point because I, I gotta get I gotta you know get to the plantation soon. But I want to get through this real quick and uh, we'll end it. And let's go to um, let's go to uh, what's the Second Corinthians six. Because uh, this is a question for those of you that really believe that. All right. Riddle me this. This is uh, Okay, I think it might be uh, 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter. <clears throat> yep, this is... uh. 1 Corinthians 6 and 16. Now explain to me why Apostle Paul says this right here. This is 1 Corinthians 6. I'll start at verse 15. It says, Know you not that your bodies are the members of a Mashiach? Right? And, and, and guess what? We're, we're married unto a Mashiach. All right? Apostle Paul said, I've, um, I've espoused you, you know, as a, as a, as a virgin to a, a Mashiach. As a chaste virgin. Right, it says, shall I then take the members of a Mashiach and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. Right? Because you, you, you know, when you, uh, spiritually, when you start to go into these other philosophies and other um, religions serving these other idols, you become basically like a harlot. Right? You, you, you're not being uh, faithful. It says, what? Know you not that which is joined to an harlot is one body? In other words, what's the purpose of getting with a harlot? To pop her, you, you join 
with an harlot to actually have sex with her. And once you do that, guess what? Y'all become one body. It says, for two, said he, shall be one flesh. All right? Like when the Lord um commanded for uh, Prophet Hosea to go and, 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 and take a, a, a daughter of whoredoms, he married her. And they had children. That, that, I mean, that was a marriage right there. When he popped her and got her pregnant, that was marriage. He became married to that harlot. Okay, they became one flesh. Hosea one. I mean, not Hosea. Um, yeah, yeah, Hosea one. And uh, verse two, it says the beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea. And the Lord said to Hosea, go take thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms for the land have committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. And yeah, this was, uh, you know, it, it, it was literal because he did go to do that. But it was to um signify Israel's you know whoredom, their their idolatrous ways. Right? So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Diblium, which conceived and bare him a son. Alright, so that that means what? That they became one. Okay. Basically, he knew his wife and 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 she bare him a son. And he did this with a harlot, by the way, Nate. And the Lord commanded him to do that. If this was against the commandment, why would the Lord encourage one of his prophets to break a commandment? You, you dudes are simple, man. But you're supposed to be these master teachers. You want all these accolades. You want these pat on the backs. We, we broke this down. We we taught this. We taught that. Yeah, it's, it, and, and it's beautiful. You know, Tawadi Yabashmi Awashai for using you men that came before us as vessels to, to to bring this bring forth this this knowledge. But you're not supposed to get all puffed up either. You're supposed to be humble. The greater thou art, the more humble thyself. And now look at you, you're going off. And plus, you know, this guy right here, man, over the years, he waxed worse and worse, man. He become more and more worldly. This dude was doing uh, karaoke videos, you know, years ago. He was just going off, doing, you know, these music videos, shooting rap music videos, just hella worldly. And I remember when Priest Danyala had him and um, uh, that dude, uh, Quanaf, of uh, Fopi, that demon. They was on there airing each other's dirt, just, just, just airing each other out, man. I was like, damn, these dudes is, is wicked. So really, you ain't in 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 the in the space to be uh, boasting, all right. So hey, get this right, man. And I'm gonna get one more before I uh, close this out. Let's go to uh, First Corinthians, the uh, seventh chapter, and we go to when um. You know, Paul giving his advice on marriage. I'm going to just go straight to the point. 1 Corinthians 7 and 36 it says, But if any man think he behaved himself uncomely toward his virgin, if she passed the flower of her age, you know, meaning she's she's become ripe, you know, which is uh, it starts, um, you know, at puberty. That's when a woman enters in, a female enters into adulthood biologically. She's, you know, past the flower of her age, right? And, you know, dudes get on us for that, for teaching that. It says, in need so required, let him do what he will. He sin of not, let them marry. Now, you look up that word marry. I have did this in a lesson before. It says, for the word marry in the Greek, gameo. Right? Gameo. To lead in marriage, take to wife, to get married, to marry, to give oneself in marriage, to give a daughter in marriage, to wed of either sex, right? Now, the root word for uh, gameo is a uh, gamos or gamas. It just means uh, simply marriage. It says a wedding, marriage festival, a wedding banquet, a wedding feast, marriage, matrimony. Right. So that's part of it. Right. 
Now, in biology, you have the term gamete, which is associated with this word gamio or gamos. Now, what is a gamete? What does that mean? Gametes are an organism's reproductive cells. That's why when you marry, you impregnate that woman. When they went into the marriage chamber, you're going raw. And you're going to eventually shoot your, your seed into that woman's uh, uh, egg. So the, the reproductive cells are, are working during marriage. It says they are also referred to as sex cells. Female gametes are called ova or, or egg cells. And male gametes are called sperm. Gametes are haploid cells. And each cell carries only one copy of each chromosome. All right, so hey, you can go biological with it to show that sex is a part of marriage or is marriage. So, what more do you need? Hey, be a based of your error and, and correct that, uh, Maharaja. And you too, IUIC, because y'all teach that too. So, you know, Lord willing, this was edifying. I'm going I'm to stop it right there. I'm going to give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh Shai. Into the next lesson, Shalom.